I'm Sarah Taylor Silverwood and I'm an artist. Um, most of my work is based around drawing um, and has connections with language and storytelling in lots of different ways. Multistory approached me last year to do a new commission and I had been working in Sandwell for quite a few years and I was really inspired by a lot of the women that I'd met. So I thought I'd start some sort of project uh, around kind of profiling women in some way. The project started from two for two reasons really. I saw in a lot of public spaces you had really traditional portraits of men. Lots of like big bronze statues, lots of uh, like gilt frames with oil paintings of historical mayors and things like that in public spaces like town halls, council houses. And I started to think about like where the women were in that story because they did exist, like where, where are their images. The second kind of starting point for the project was thinking about the way that a lot of the work that women do is not celebrated in a traditional way care roles or working behind the scenes at home or um, volunteering. So I started to think how can we provide a platform through making a uh, new artwork for those women. I saw some of the um, leaflets at uh, Thimble Mill Library. The leaflets uh, actually said um, uh, it had to be somebody who'd done uh, something for you personally. I nominated Barbara because she helps so much the community but also she has helped me a lot. One of the things that attracted me to um, nominating Leonie was um, the portrait uh, that Sarah would paint of her uh, because I think Leonie is one of the most humble people I've I've ever met despite how accomplished and how um, how much impact she has on people around her and She's very good when you tell her that she's great and wonderful and doing great things at deflecting that and um, finding other people to pass the praise on to, which is all part of you know who she is. Um, but I thought you know if there's a if there's a portrait and it's not just your your biased friend who loves you saying you're great, um, there's this 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 thing to look at that's kind of you and other people are looking at it acknowledging. Um, that kind of has has a bit more um, oomph, and she can't she can't ignore it. She has to she has to she has to absorb that that she is great. So that was a good reason to nominate her. Bali definitely goes the extra mile. She's such a caring person. She always looks out for somebody else, someone who's obviously got her own story in terms of her own health journey, who's then reached out and thought, well, okay, I think I need to do something, and not many people can do that. Multistory had so many applications, um, and it was amazing just to read all these stories through. It was really, really good and rewarding to know that all these people are out there doing fabulous work. I mean, we had really high number of nominations, and it, I think it was the first one that was um, the first kind of award in this kind of area. And there was a, a lot of different, you know, nominations from different backgrounds. Um, people, some family and friends, some from organisations, some from neighbours. Judging the award, it was really hard because we had a lot of uh, entries and a lot of women that do so much. We didn't just look at the traditional volunteering. The things that we looked at were such as, like, lesbian, gay communities, the refugee community, you know, and, and the communities that aren't, you know, they're the silent communities, if you like. The people that were selected as winners, they all had a few things in common. They were all really um, kind of strong, proactive women who were not necessarily a kind of public-facing figure but who were constantly doing work for others behind the scenes. I'm involved with Worley Woods Community Trust, which is a, a community-based uh, trust that looks after them two, nearly two, two, two miles round uh, uh, Woodland, and we provide community events at least one a month, sometimes two a month, for the local community. I'm involved in, uh, at the LGBT Centre in Birmingham with a, uh, an asylum group 
uh, the Journey Church Asylum Group it's called actually but uh, they meet once a month and it's for people from um, countries where to be gay is, is illegal um, and we provide help and support for them seeking asylum and safety in this country and through that I've been involved with the Aging Better initiative which is an, a, a national initiative and there are five hubs in Birmingham and it, that's looking at uh, decreasing the isolation of 50 plus people within the UK um, and one of those five hubs in Birmingham is based at the LGBT Centre and it's ageing with pride and they reckon that, that gay people over the age of 50 are more inclined to be isolated within their community uh, because probably they're not out within their community so I help out with that as well as an ambassador. I All my work I do voluntary base first one is setting up an Asian mental health support group. Um, it's been running for a year now and uh, and I'm very proud of being involved and leading that. Um, secondly, I've also meet and greet patients at Sandra Hospital and also at the Recovery College. I'm a volunteer and a student there and have been there for a couple of years now and really, really uh, got so much out of it while I've been there. I do uh, a number of different things, but um, a couple of years ago, um, was it September 2015, I started Bearwood Action for Refugees. Um, and we, uh, a voluntary community group, um, who do fundraising um, for refugees here and newly arrived people in our home community and refugees in transit. And we also do um, befriending uh, activities for our for um, newly arrived families here in Bearwood and uh, awareness raising amongst the local community as well. Um, and then I also have a, a community interest company um, with my friend Rosie and um, called Mothership. And we uh, an, are a um, community arts company and we uh, do all sorts of different community arts projects, but predominantly working with um, newly arrived mothers and their children. I met up with Leonie and we went to Warley Woods in Bearwood with her two children. Uh, she really wanted them to be in the portrait and she was keen for her portrait to be in Warley Woods. I, I love it there and spend a lot of time there with my family and on my own and um, and we've also done quite a lot of our events there. Um, every year we do a procession of light, uh, Bearwood Action do a procession of light in Warley Woods as an awareness raising exercise and the whole local community comes together in solidarity with um, newly arrived communities here in the UK and those still in transit. And um, so Warley Woods is, is, yeah, it's a really special place for us. We just talked about the relationship of the woods to the sort of work that Leonie does. For me, it was really good to be able to see her in that setting and her children and her interacting together as well. One of the kind of key elements of my life is my children. They are a big inspiration in the work that I do, um, but also uh, motherhood generally, and uh, myself as a mother, but also um, other mothers. Um, are kind of my key inspiration really and it's 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 them that I really recognize honor in and it's it's them that I feel should be celebrated I usually put everybody else before myself but uh, on this occasion I'm, I'm out there and uh, and it means a lot to me when we'd been talking earlier on, she talked a lot about the way that her life felt like it had been divided up into past, present and future in three quite distinct ways. The watches, clocks, time, that means so much to me. It's the journey that I've been, a, a very difficult journey I've been, in, um, been on and now finally have come out on the other side. Um, and things are happening for me. We talked a lot about mental health and the idea of creating a portrait which had a lot of stillness to it. And over those conversations, we've ended up getting to know each other quite well. So I felt like once I got to making her portrait, 
I had quite a clear idea of who she was and what I wanted to portray. The, I mean, I've really enjoyed the planning of the process for the portraits because, um, you, you know, we've got to know each other. And I think um, a portrait is, is, is a, has a lot to do with the inside of somebody and the, um, the sketch of, of the por what the portrait is going to be. It's just me, you know, it's just, it, it, um, you, you, you found the bits of me that are, that are me, they're important, the personal bits of me, and they're incorporated into the, uh, into the, into the portraits. We talked a lot about where Barbara's portrait should be, and eventually decided on her home because she absolutely loves it. And there was also quite a, a few pieces of furniture in the house, which I think meant a lot to her. So we decided to try and keep those in as well. I've always been uh, a dog owner and uh, to, to have my last dog and my present dog coordinated into the photographs, that's the last dog being Ben and my present dog being Oscar, the little feisty little Jack Russell, is really lovely. Um, I love this house, I love the stained glass windows and they, you know, one of them is going to be in there as well and the the sideboard uh, that's incorporated in the in the picture is my mum and dad's and it, that's when I look at it it always takes me back to their front room you know you ha always had a front room that you only used at Christmas basically um, and there's a lot of things in that sideboard which, which are very personal to me. One thing that all the winners had in common is that, that they were all really modest and I think they would all say that they wanted their portraits to represent something bigger than them, which was the causes that they're involved with. So they all wanted to use it as a way of promoting and elevating the sorts of things that they're passionate about. Women do a lot, a lot for the families and a lot for other people. And I think, as I say, me personally, um, women don't get noticed enough so I think it's definitely you know a good thing that we're monitoring women. I work with a lot of fabulous women in the local community and they're bringing so much. They're unsung heroes and we should honour that. These women who are actually inspiring women, the achievements they have made will raise the profile of the work that they're doing and I'll definitely empower all the women. The female role models that we see in the media today are mainly celebrities, singers, pop stars and it's really important to see a different kind of role model which I think that the Women's Honour Award shows real women who are doing important work within their communities. The thing that I was really keen to do is for people to see these portraits and I feel like maybe somebody like them was portrayed or a kind of reminder that people, ordinary people can do really amazing things.